Yes. No, I use land trust, and, and I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll give you a little explanation real quick on how that works. Um, I use an Illinois land trust, and I have a, um, uh, a trustee in Florida, okay? Uh, and the really cool thing is, is uh, the trustee, although is in Florida, is in my house, okay? <laughs> which so is I, not in Florida. Which is, which is, might not be in Florida. Uh, but anyways, that's the resident address. So here's the cool thing. It's an Illinois land trust, uh, which is totally legal to use in all 50 states. Okay? And the way that a land trust works is it's a private agreement between two parties to hold real estate anonymously. It's basically what it is. President Obama owns his house in a land trust. Well, we don't know if he owns it. You want, you want to talk about a true conspiracy? Who's the beneficiary? We know who the we know it's in a land trust, and we know that his attorney is the trustee on it, but nobody knows who the beneficiary is. It's not recorded. It's not recorded. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows who it is except for President Obama, his trustee, and the actual beneficiary, which is Iran. No. <laughs> <laughs> England, the Bank of England, could be the Federal Reserve. I think it's Resnick, the guy that did the land deal. <laughs> no, honestly, I bet you, I, you know, well, I mean, if I was going to put money on it, we don't know. The point I'm trying to make is we don't know, and we'll never know, because that will never be released, right? How, who, does, who else knows? There's, there's one entity in the government that would know, IRS. Okay. Now, I can also sell you my beneficial interest on a contract. So there, there's another whole aspect of who owns the house. Nobody knows. I like that when I own property. I have an ex-wife, right? Ask her uh, private investigators. Are you able to do the land contracts with properties in California? Yes. Yeah. A land, a land trust, it's not a land contract. That's very important Different. to differentiate. Yeah. A land trust is 600 years old. It's old English law. Okay. And what's happened is, is the uh, Chicago land trust has tons of legal state or legal precedents. So that's why it's used mostly. Um, and the really cool thing is, is, you know, literally they don't know who the beneficiary is. And the only way that they can find out is with a subpoena from a court if it's a criminal situation. And they got to prove that. So it's, it's pretty difficult. It's difficult. Really, that's my ex-wife. I always got property. <laughs> I have no interest in any properties. Yes, sir. Can you, can you put, uh, when you title it just uh, something trust, you want to say something land trust? No, no, no. What, so what I do is, uh, when you make a land trust, you print it off of your printer. Okay? All you have to do is pay a, uh, a notary to uh, notarize the trustee's signature. Okay, that's it. How much does that cost? It's an expensive destruction. It's what? It's an expensive destruction. No, 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 Illinois land trust is, you, you probably can download one on the internet, okay? Now, here's the cool thing, the, uh, you've met Randy Hughes, yeah. Randy Hughes is the guy that I got it from, anybody here of Randy Hughes? Yeah, yeah. he's spoken here. Yeah. He's spoken awesome, here. Yeah. I did too, <laughs> paid a thousand bucks, I bought everything, and when I pick up the phone and call him, he answers the phone, isn't that amazing? It's good. Amazing. That's cool, because yeah. I do that, but nobody ever calls me. <laughs> Trust me, I get calls at 3 o'clock in the morning. Really? What am I putting this line? But anyways, the, uh, the land trust, what, what I do for the, for the name of the buyer is <clears throat> I use numbers. Okay, so uh, I can use the ABC123 LLC land trust and I can put a number behind the LLC. Now, you actually have to say the word land <clears throat> trust. I do. Yeah, because you're taking title in a land trust. You get to say trust. No, because you have to, to be specific. Because a trust and a land trust are two different things. See, a trust has to be formed <laughs> by a court or by an attorney, and it has to be recorded. This does not. When, when we close on the property, I put the land trust in a file folder in my desk. That's the only person that ever sees it. And the neat thing is, is there's an actual form in Randy's thing. It's called the certification of a land trust. <laughs> So you just print that out at the same time, fill that out. 
So when the title company says, we well, need to sue the land trust, no, no, they don't. That's right. You give them a certification of the land trust. Wow. From, you know, my form. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I fire my uh, trustee uh -huh. immediately. There's no recording requirements after recording of the deed. There's no recording requirements to say, hey, we fired our trustee. We got a new one now. Oh, and that trustee that, that ends up taking the job does not live in Florida. And here's the cool thing. When they go to the one in Florida and they say, who's running that thing now? Who's in, you know, who's, who's, whose deal is that? They don't know. They don't know. Can't answer what you don't know. Well, did Cliff Gager own this? I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah, shell game. <laughs> yes, sir. Is that, no, I, I was going to say, it sounds like it's an irrevocable trust. You, you deed away your interest in the property to the trust, and you get deeded back. And uh, don't uh, get technical yeah. with me on the term deed. You get a beneficial interest in the trust, right. which is not the same as ownership. Correct. Correct. Right. And uh, and and as a consequence of that, and, and that's right. And uh, nobody nobody can know really who owns the trust. Right. Nobody can. And and the thing is, when you litigate these things, the great thing about it when you litigate them, a lot of attorneys, and I won't say they're stupid. Although I have wondered in the past whether some attorneys got their bar licenses out of Cracker Jack's pocket. But, you know, you see that. Well, they don't, my in discovery, <laughs> they, don't, they don't ask about any trusts. And so you can go through a whole discovery phase. I don't know if you're selling these things. I guess I'm helping you out. No, no, no. I, you I can don't go through a whole sell. discovery phase, and you can get to trial. And they have never asked that question. And you don't have to tell them. Oh, this, there's this really cool thing. You don't thing. have to tell them anything that they don't ask you to tell them. It is really cool. You only cool. have to tell them the stuff that they, act, that they actually ask you. And you don't even have to do that. There's this wonderful thing called the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But uh, I, I like to avoid that, in, 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 except in my criminal enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Maybe when I'm testifying before Congress, you know. Yeah. Hey, did you see in the news that Lois Lerner's, oh, the computer crashed and we lost all the emails. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Randy Hughes, uh, he is out of uh, Illinois, uh, lives near Chicago, and he is Mr. Land Trust. Mm -hmm. So if you just search Mr. Land Trust, he's a really good friend of mine. In fact, if they search Mr. Land Trust on the SBR REI website, we got an hour and a half of him speaking at one of our meetings. Oh, Excellent. Okay. Yeah. And uh, well, I'll, I'll talk to you later because I, I have a promo code. Do you have a promo code? <laughs> do you have one? Probably. Oh, okay. But well, we do need to talk later. Yeah. So we'll do that. Excellent. So, um, anyways, I bought his program because it, it's really that good. And you know, it's not just the anonymity. It's again, when you're buying it with the land trust. 99.9% .9 of agents have absolutely no clue what it is. That's right. Okay, so all you have to do is explain it to them, and it's this easy. It is a private instrument or agreement between two parties to take title of a piece of property without any exposure. And it's legal. It's been done for 600 years. In fact, if the president can do it, so can I. Right? Is that fair? Wow. <laughs> that sounds fair. Oh, don't get me going on the politics. <laughs> I've actually withdrawn from Facebook for a year almost because I am very political. I'm an anarchist. Do you guys know what an anarchist is? Yeah, you don't believe it. I want like very little government. You know, like back in the good old days. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, I'll make one statement. One statement. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Democrats versus Republicans. It's them against us. And when you figure that out, you'll you'll figure out the game. Anyway, so it's a game. So that's why I'm leaving the country. No. I'm <laughs> you know, you state, right yeah, so this we don't need <laughs> No, there's a there's a cartoon and the, and the politicians standing on the the piece of wood that's hanging over the cliff, 
and, and he's standing over the cliff, and all the people are on the other end of it. Right. You know, he's telling them what to do, and all they have to do is go like this, and he's done. Yeah. But uh, that'll never happen. Anyways, don't get me going. I love real estate. I love everything about it. It has given me the opportunity to, uh, I, I've made over $100 million. Okay? I don't have $100 million now, because I got divorced. Okay? And... <laughs> My, my spouse now, we're not technically married. So if you're trying to own or finance a tenant in a property, it would be a land contract, not a land trust. Oh, God, no. He brought up something really exciting. How many people know an illegal alien? Not like from planet Zetar. <laughs> right? Just somebody that is not a U.S. citizen. Can they buy a house? Yes. No. No, they, they cannot take title to the house. They can't get a mortgage to the house. The bank doesn't want to give them money because they're going to be, like, deported. Well, we know they're not, but there could be that chance, right? Seriously. Legally, they could. Legally, okay. Here's the beautiful thing about a land trust. I can sell you my beneficial interest on a contract for beneficial interest. So the, the land trust stays in effect. It stays in place, it never changes title, it never transfers, but I have a contract, and it actually Brandy has the forms in the packages, Got a, I should have just brought them. <laughs> um, it has the forms in there that says it's a contract for beneficial interest, and you fill out the terms just like a contract for deed. It's almost the same thing, huh. except it doesn't involve real estate. It's UC, uh, um, UCC. UCC, right? So when they are late, they're not late on their rent. They're late on their contract. And they're not late on their contract. They're in default on their contract. You can have them out in California evicted in three days. <clears throat> but if you wanted to own or finance and get them qualified with a standard loan eventually, would that satisfy a standard loan? Absolutely. Rule? Okay, good. Yeah, because it is a illegal contract. You can okay. show the, the lender, say, here's where he legally contracted the beneficial interest of the property. Because the bank's going to say, we can't close it in the land trust. They're going to have to take title. Right, which is fine. By yeah, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but and, and when you sell it to them, you don't have to transfer title. No closing costs. Okay. Unless you charge junk fees. You know, you can do that. You can say, well, there's a dock prep fee. And I, it takes me, you know, thirty dollars to walk over there and print it out on my computer. <laughs> I had to prep that. Um, but no, it's it's really simple because all you do is you you show the lender here they paid on this for two years on this contract. Here's all the pay stubs. You know, here's all the the, the uh, payment stubs. And make sure you like. Besides good credit, what do they need? Like just six months, not two years, the lender. Oh, right now, yeah. um, I think FHA is 640 credit score. 640 credit score and six six months of payments on time. And that would yeah, they might. If, if the lower the score, the higher the amount of uh, payments they might want to see. Okay, but it's really pretty easy to get a loan right now. Everybody's like, "Oh my God, it's so hard." Not compared to what I know. Right. And if you did it like that, they wouldn't even have to have a down payment because they already own it. They would just refinance into it. There is a little bit of iffy because they technically don't own the real estate. They own a contract. So the mortgage company wouldn't accept that. Part. They may or may not, and it's a judgment call. Okay. See, they have guidelines. They're not laws. Right. They're guidelines. So if they, if they can see that it's directly related, it's like if you were unemployed during a two-year period of your, uh, uh, your employment history for your verification of employment. Let's say you were employed and then you got sick and you collected it. Uh, unemployment or, or you know disability and then you went back to a different job but it was in the same field that can that can all be looked at as well it was a situation he was insured and he took care of his business you know? so if they didn't accept it the next option might be some money that went to rent actually was part of their down payment I don't know the legality on that okay. I have not financed anything out of a beneficial interest contract gotcha okay, okay. And, and I don't want to I get 12% interest why do it? There's your passive income. Okay. So and now think of this: you buy the house for sixty thousand yeah. bucks. I'll give you an example: a uh, house that I did in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Never saw it. Never saw it at all. Uh, bought it for twenty-four thousand dollars. I'm thinking, oh my God, it's got to be a real piece of crap. It was moving condition. 
had to change the hood over the stove. That was it. Oh, and I had to put a door on the back door, you know, on the back. Um, <clears throat> so I put $4,000 into it because I painted the outside and everything. And I sold it uh, th through the agent. The agent was uh, from Chicago, but he was, this, he was uh, I think he was from Cuba. And his wife was Mexican. And in Tennessee right now, there is a very large um, Mexican uh, presence there. Why? Because Alabama turned the light on. Do you know what I mean by that? Alabama start really pushing down and, and clamping down on illegal aliens, so they all left Alabama and they went to South Carolina, North Carolina, and that area because they don't care. Okay. Um, sold them the house for uh, 79, 12% interest, 100% financing. Um, and their payment is the same basically as what rent would be. Right. And if they really want to cut that in half, it's up to them to get the standard loan. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And the house would appraise at 67, 68. So the 79 could be forgiven at closing and, and you know, given them a, uh, um, you know, a lower price on, right. to put the deal together. But I have no reason to do that. Okay. Okay. 12% interest. That's good. And... They're illegal aliens. Thank you. Okay? <laughs> they pay their bills on time. Yeah. Every month, two days early. Good. Why? No one problem. No problem. Am, am I bad for doing this? No. Oh. Nobody else is giving them a chance. I love it. I would love to do it everywhere. It's not like you can advertise for illegal aliens in the newspaper. Craigslist. <laughs> 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 you do it once. Yeah. 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 You yeah. Once. Just tell no, I did that. I, I had a run in the first oh, couple months of my business. Uh, I had a run in with the SEC. Oh. I, I put an ad in the paper. It says, "Hey, are you getting like six percent on your CDs? Oh, yeah. I'll give you twelve. Oh, right? you oh yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I brought in. Well, I I, lit, I put it in. It's called the Seminole Beacon. And it was the little old people's, I lived in St. Pete, Florida. That's where all the old people go to die. Uh, it's, 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 it's God's waiting room. <laughs> um, and, and literally next door to my offices was a condo of retire, you know, retirement condo with like 8,000 units. So here's the cool thing. 8,000 people came over. <laughs> no, I, I raised $2 million in two days. Oh, wow. And then the last guy that came in, he's like, Cliff, tell me all about this. This sounds so exciting. I and I did. I was like, yeah, I'm going to take your money and I'm going to put it in here with everybody else's money in my corporate account cool. so you'll know it'll be nice and safe. And then when I go buy houses, I'm going to take the money out of there and I'm going to buy houses. Cool. I sell an unregistered securities. Yeah. So he says, wow, he says, you know, and I went through all the details with him, and he's like, that's really interesting. I got something for you to read. <laughs> <laughs> he had already printed up a cease and desist. I was amazed at how fast he printed that. Wow. Yeah, 50 grand cost me. And I had to give all the money back. Ooh. Yeah. So I, I, I actually teach a class on how not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hadn't pooled the money and you hadn't done the advertising, you would have been okay? Uh, his his definition and the attorney's definition and the guy that I talked to at the SEC is F and F friends and family. Gotcha. Okay, are we all friends now? Yep, <laughs> of course. Okay, but I can't I can't go solicit publicly. Gotcha. Now, you know, if you guys call me up and say, Hey, Cliff, you know, I got two hundred thousand dollars and I want to make eight percent, you know, call me. <laughs> I can do that. Three in the morning. Yeah, three in the morning. <laughs> I'll answer. Because when you publish the percentage, is what got you. Uh, no, just just the fact that I said to him, I'm going to take your money and put it all together with all yeah. these other people's money. Yeah. That was it. Um, it's called commingling of funds, and that's a federal offense, punishable by by up to ten years in prison. Ouch. Federal prison. Yeah, I got some good prison jokes. <laughs> and why do you suppose that's a law? Um, the IRS oh, you, want the competition. No, here's the exact reason why. Because if I go under, and everybody in here put a odd number, like you put 10,000, you put 100,000, you put 4,000, you know what I mean? How does the IRS, or how does the federal government come into there and figure it out, especially if I have no records? Right. Okay? So that's why they do that. Gotcha. They, they want a prospectus, they want it to be registered so that they can track it, and honestly, it's a great idea to do that because there's a lot of people that are scammers. Right. You know? 
Um, in fact, uh, there was that um, Zeke Rewards. You guys hear about that? Yeah, I know. I, I, everybody I know was in it. And I was like, no, thank you. No. But it's only a thousand bucks. And I know some people that had like a hundred accounts so that they could rate, rate. Yeah. Yeah, I know somebody had $200,000 in it. And they just announced the other day that they're going to be giving back about 40%, which is good. You know? I knew when I looked at it on Google and I saw the address was a big field in, in the middle of Tennessee. I was like, uh, no, not going there. Not going there. So with the land trust, you can do you can sell it like that. And and the way that I put the name in it, I use the name of a number, uh, like ABC LLC one or ABC one two three LLC seven five five. Okay. Then make sure you have a spreadsheet <laughs> with those numbers and the correlating address in a corresponding address. So is there any need for a land contract? Is there any what? Need for a land contract as opposed to a land trust? No, 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 a land, I, I've, I've never used a land contract. I'm just asking, is there any need for something like that? I, I can see why you've never used it. It sounds like you never have to. Why and I've only to? been using the land trust for about the last three years. Three years, okay. I used to use LLCs. Okay. But it's expensive to do that now. Yeah. California, you gotta pay $800 right. or the That's tax, right. whichever is, is minimum. So even if you have a corporation that you never do anything with, you got to pay California 800 bucks. Could you avoid probate using something like that? Land Absolutely. Trust? The land trust never dies. Never dies. Okay. I love that. Okay. In fact, I had my dad put all his, his properties into a land trust. And he's like, well, this sounds fishy. And I'm like, this isn't what the attorney said. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> he's, so he had, he, had, he had everything in my kids' names. Okay. So if you're doing any kind of joint venture with people and you had land trust on either side, that would really make it easy for people when they pass away. <laughs> Well, for the people who are left, not the yes. people who pass away. Yeah, because the, you have, if, if you're one of the parties uh, as, as a uh, um, beneficial, uh, beneficiary, you're going to have the paperwork. So if anything ever happened, you could go to a court and say, this is what happened, that person died over there, and here's all the paperwork. Okay. You know, so it's very simple. It's very <laughs> black and white, and it's very simple and easy, and there's never... Now, some states and some municipalities or taxing authorities are figuring out that we're starting to do this. Okay, because it's not common. And what they've decided is, oh, you have it in a land trust? Well, how often does a property transfer ownership? Do you guys know what the average is? Five years? Well, yeah, it used to be three to five. Then it got a little bit longer, like, a, like five to seven. And it's about five years right now. Every five years, people move, which is what? transfer of, of property. Mm -hmm. And the really cool thing is, is California bases it on the purchase price, but there's other states that don't. And you have to pay X amount of dollars in order to transfer the property. Right? You with me? Okay. So here's the cool thing that they've come up with is, hey, you're not ever going to transfer it anymore, so we're going to require you to re-register it every five years. <laughs> so they get what? A new recording fee or mm -hmm. some fee something. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I like the anonymity part. Okay. And the ease of, oh, uh, you, I, I just put this house on a contract. It's in a land trust. And it says on my contract that the seller forbids me to transfer the ownership of this property for a year. Well, 60 to, 60 to 90 days, right? And I can sell it to him in five minutes. Why is that? Because I don't sell him the property. Heck, I haven't even closed on the deal yet. I can sell them the, the beneficial interest of that contract to purchase the property. Okay? That's how I do most of my deals today. That's good. Very good. Who gets copies of the land trust? The, the beneficiary and the trustee. That's it. So there's a buyer or something or a group? Well, you would want to you know, have a digital copy and back it up and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I just happen to have some back here from Randy Hughes, so uh, they're free if you want any information. Yeah, Randy's really good stuff. Yeah. So let's talk about my stuff. Because <laughs> we did go a little over, and I'll, I'll make this really quick, fast, and easy. Is that okay? Okay. Because you know I got to sell some. Right? Okay. Everybody just went like this. <laughs> Hold on to that. I'm going to sell you something that is so valuable that you'll thank God or Allah or whoever you, the, the alien dude from Zarnon, <laughs> every single day 
that you had the opportunity to do this. How can I say that for truth? How can I know that? Because I've done it for 17 years. Okay? You, you with me? With you. I'm going to wait for the train to go by. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> it's not a train. All right, so let's talk about what I've got for you guys. Um, do you think any of these strategies that I shared with you today can help you achieve your financial goals? Big time. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, if you guys just take one aspect of what I told you, just go put in 100 offers this month. You will probably double what you're doing right now. <laughs> That's if you just get one, right? All right. Of course they will. I'm going to show you how to make money. Right? You can double your business in one day. Just get off your butt. All right, so let me show you what I got because I've got some really. I'm not going. There we go. All right, there we go. <laughs> That's me. I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> I wouldn't even something that. What? My belt and my stomach were. Uh, anyway. Anyways, so I've been helping people like you for 17 years. Why is it going? There we go. So Mark and Susan, uh, they live in Northern California. They took my training class uh, about three years ago. And uh, Mark uh, does hydraulics for the uh, um, oil industry. He lives in, uh, near Bakersfield and that whole area there. So he travels around all over the United States in his little truck. And he does this one thing that he's the only guy that knows how to do it. Yay, so, so, oh no. And, and it was almost like I wanted to go do that, but then I figured out it took like a lot of physical work and you can't stay at home and watch TV and do that. So I was like, nah. Because uh, you can do real estate and stay at home and watch TV too, because you can't ever miss Jerry Springs. <laughs> and I think they're reruns now. Because <laughs> nobody's that stupid still. Um, but, anyways. Um, and, and she runs the office. She does all the, the, the calls and all the bookkeeping and whatnot. And they went to one of those really, really, really expensive places and got an education. And uh, they were supposed to have me as their instructor. Um, but I ended up parting from that company about a week before their, their event. So they had somebody else do theirs. And they went about a year and never put a deal together after they took their training. Does that sound familiar? Yep. Very. Where people do that? Yep. Okay. A lot. I don't want to say anything bad about other training programs, but I don't have anything good to say. <laughs> <laughs> There's one guy that I think has the best system of all, and it's still 50 grand, oh, and that's that's Stan. Stan has has a Yale uh, you know degree in business, and he has formatted it really good. But I still see people take it and not do anything with it. Okay, okay? every day. Every, every day. day. Every day. Okay. Sixty-five percent of my students that take my training put a deal within thirty to forty-five days in their pocket. Okay. Now, Mark and Susan. Uh, in one year, uh, Mark and Susan used the tool uh, given to them in this program, and they banked just over two hundred seventy-five thousand. That was the first year. And it was really funny because when I was asking her, she says, well, it's actually going to be more, but I haven't closed on it yet, so I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time, there was another month to go. She actually ended up making 304, 305 or something like that one year after taking my class versus nothing taking somebody else's class. Um, oh, and they both have a full-time job. Oh, my God. She, right now, yeah. processes all my deals. Any of the deals that I bring in, she processes all of them. And she ends up buying probably a third of them. Because he makes really, really good money. He's the only guy in the world that does what he does. Okay? He, he says, you know, I was standing in the field one day, and the guy was all pissed off at me, yelling and screaming, because I can get it done cheaper, and I'm going to call my guy in New York, and he's going to get it done cheaper. Mark just did this. Okay, so he gets on the phone, like, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 I want this guy to come out there. And Mark was like, it's going to ring any second now. And that guy in New York called Mark. <laughs> <laughs> he says, hello? Yes? Yeah, would you like to put him on a three-way call? 
<laughs> the guy's like, okay, here's my check mark. <laughs> um, so really cool person, um, uh, but she is really cranky. She uh, just put together a hotel in Wyoming. Why Wyoming? It's like a $21 million hotel deal she put together. Oh, oh, oil. 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 And, uh, I don't know if you can get insider information. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that was really cool. 